Hey, in this episode, we're going to talk about should you buy or sell or grow or just keep the status quo? Should you exit? Should you acquire new practices? Should you grow your practice or keep it status quo? A little bit of tongue in cheek there. Let's get into it. My name is Dave Kittle, owner of Concierge Pain Relief, home physical therapy in New York City, and the CEO of the Fieldmaker Group. We're currently speaking with practice owners about partnering or acquiring some or all of their practice. And today we're talking about, uh, this is a partial audience question about different situations. I got owners that reach out to me all the time, friends, colleagues, et cetera, some of you in the audience about what they should potentially do. What are their options? And you have plenty of options. Obviously, if you're you know, in your 30s, 40s, maybe even 50s, you're probably not thinking about exiting or selling. Some of you might, some of you are. So in this episode, just a reminder, you have different options. These are kind of like a breakdown of potential physical therapy business decisions. Here's our, these are your private practice options. Everyone has options. If you do nothing, if you do nothing at all, that's still, you're, you're still selecting something and it would kind of fall into that status quo bucket. Obviously, everyone's trying to grow and expand. Hiring is challenging. Uh, but if you're looking to continue to grow, great. You could expand your team and hire, recruit, interview, hire, onboard, train, and then retain those talented team members, right? Obviously, more new marketing, getting more new patients in the door. You could open a new location. You could grow via de novo clinic startup location, opening up a new location to expand your practice. You could also merge with another practice. There was... Um, it, well, there is an example of uh, Chad Madden's practice, which is Madden Physical Therapy out in like the Harrisburg area. And he merged with another therapy practice, which was Gilbert Physical Therapy. And over the past several years, they became Madden, uh, Madden Gilbert Physical Therapy or Gilbert Madden. I think Madden Gilbert Physical Therapy. So they combined, they joined, they merged together. I can't recall how large Gilbert Physical Therapy was, but when they sold, I think it was six or so locations, six or seven, maybe. And they were, uh, they had a majority buyout by USPH, the large publicly traded company with uh, Chris Redding as the CEO there. And a lot of this is documented publicly on Chad's podcast. But so Chad merged with Gilbert Physical Therapy and they continued to grow together and sharing resources and all that. And then when they sold a majority, and this is all public knowledge as Chad mentioned on his podcast, when they sold, I think like 70 or so percent, 70 or 80 percent of Madden Gilbert physical therapy, when they sold that to USPH, they were able to have a higher EBITDA multiple. I'm not sure if he he has described it as an $11 million exit. And then, you know, he doesn't own 100 percent of it and some of his team owns some of it. Uh, but all that is public knowledge in the public domain. And then I think the partnership was 70 or 80 percent. So he... So Chad and uh, I think it, I'm not sure if it's Greg Gilbert, but anyway, his his business partner, they still own some minority but meaningful equity in the practice and they're partner now with USPH. So that's a way to grow incrementally with merging your practice with another. And then they got to the point of the next step, which would be to sell or exit. And within selling and exiting, there's options, as we've mentioned other times on the show. You could exit 60 or 70% and then keep a big chunk. You can exit 100% of your equity and sell to whichever buyer would be interested in that. So there's options there. You could keep a minority stake and continue to co-manage the practice over the next three, five, seven years. Or you can sell out altogether. And there's going to be differences in that. It depends on a lot of different factors. And then also you can buy practices. So I've had some Colleagues asked me uh, behind the scenes about buying practices. Another practice owner um, who I've had on the show recently, Eric Broadworth, he's doing some interesting stuff in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And he's added uh, red light therapy, which was, I interviewed him recently on the show. But now he's interested in potentially partnering or acquiring practices in the Grand Rapids area. They have one location for, it used to be fuel physical therapy. Now it's fuel health and wellness. And he's now considering the idea or the prospect of growing the acquisition. And so that's something that he's now exploring. And he's even mentioned, so they're out of pocket, cash practice, private pay. And he's even exploring like potentially 
an in-network practice, uh, which then you can kind of have cross referrals and and some some components there that make sense. Or if you have someone that calls into the main cash practice phone number and they're like dead set on using their insurance and they're not looking to pay out of pocket much at all, then if Eric owned an in-network office, then he could just refer that prospective patient to this other practice that he would then co-own or maybe own outright. And so that individual, that prospective patient doesn't leave the bucket completely. They kind of get passed over to another practice potentially, right? So that's that's something that I've been hearing from some of my colleagues, which are this question around, you know, should I open an, another location? Should I buy local competitors nearby? Should I look to partner with them? And you'll have to run financials. You'll have to run pro formas and spreadsheets in regards to your time and effort and your capital costs in regards to building out a new location versus buying. And it, there's a book called Buy Then Build by Walker Dibel. And it's very interesting. It's, it's more for the M&A side of things of what we're doing as buyers. But it's something that you could do as well, which is you could buy or partner, you could acquire or buy or partner with a nearby practice that maybe looks to have a partial exit or is looking to get out altogether. And so maybe you you run the numbers, you look at the time and effort, because there is time and effort in opening up a new location. Obviously, you, most of you know this, which is the time and effort to go find a lease. You probably have a real estate broker. You're going to find a great brick and mortar location. You will do site visits. You're going to maybe look at multiple places. Then you're going to look at the square footage, the cost of the build out. Is it situated in an, a great location? All those types of things take time and not necessarily money. Or you could partner and co-own or buy a local private practice and continue growth that way. You can, what we call external growth via acquisitions. And so you could, same thing that we're trying to do, which is we're trying to partner or acquire practices Obviously, we want to grow each of those year after year, which would be internal growth. But the holistic company entity could also grow the external growth through acquisitions or partnerships. So acquisitions, if you're going to buy, you know, 51% or more, I mean, it's it's still a it's still kind of an acquisition or a partnership. A lot of this is just semantics, but really anything that is where you're taking a majority stake, you are acquiring it, uh, but you're also partnering with that practice owner if they're retaining some amount of equity, some stake, some skin in the game. And finally, status quo. So I said, what are your options as a practice owner? You don't have to, you don't have to sell or exit right now, potentially, right? Okay. And you are not looking to open a new location or buy a competitor nearby. Okay. And I know most, I mean, every practice owner wants to grow, but that takes time and effort and it's challenging out there, right? It's it's challenging with recruiting and hiring. Everyone mentions it and DPTs are coming out of school with a lot of student loan debt and they're requesting and demanding competitive compensation packages. And that's just the nature of our situation right now. So you all are intending to grow but are you? Everyone wants to grow, but are you doing the things right now to make that possible, to make that happen? Or are you treating more patients and not working on the business, but you're working in the business? Are you working in the practice and not on the practice? Those are some of the challenges that I've seen where practice owners may find themselves at status quo. And respectfully, without mentioning any names or anything like that, but respectfully, even seeing practice owners' financials before 2019, a lot of practices will have or have had very similar revenue numbers before COVID for call it 2017, 2018, 2019. Some of the practices that we've seen that we've assessed and evaluated and many that we've passed on had a revenue number, a top line revenue number in 2017, 2018, 2019, that was a very similar number 
and whether they reach the peak of what's possible in that brick and mortar or what they reach the peak of what's possible for their abilities, who knows? But a lot of those practices that we've seen, they did amazing work over the past 10, 15, maybe 20 years to scale, to grow a team, to get referral partners, to refer patients to them, to get patients that continue to come back. They've done amazing work, amazing. No one can deny your patient experience, your patient care, your compassion, your results, your outcomes. No one can, no one can deny that. But if your revenue, and this is pre-COVID, because I know COVID threw a curveball, threw a wrench in all this, but look back, look back in your financials. I'm just curious, like you could do some self-reflection. Look at your financials. What was your revenue? What was your revenue number in 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019? And if it's not going up and to the right, meaning a positive trend line, you got to ask yourself why. And you know, as we get further out of COVID from 2020, and it was, you know, a lot of fear, doubt, and uncertainty. And then it's been better ever since then in 2021 with the Omicron variant. And now we're at, you know, 2022, we're further out of like the craziness and the uncertainty and, you know, vaccines, uh, all this other stuff now kind of in the mix. And so now 2023, what is your, what is your revenue trend right now compared to this time last year in 2022. Those are the types of things that I would look at if I were, a, and I am a practice owner, but if I were a practice owner that's been in practice for 10, 15, 20 plus years. And so these are the these are business decisions and not making a business decision about selling it or exiting or buying practices or growing by expanding your team and doing more marketing and, and hiring. If you don't do any of that type of stuff, you're still making a decision, and I'm telling you respectfully that that decision is most likely status quo. By not doing anything at all, you are potentially shrinking your business. I've heard somewhere online, maybe Gary Vee said it or something like that. You're either expanding or shrinking. It's kind of scary to think about. Maybe there's a third, you know, a third would be like you're plateaued. But as costs increase every year and payment reimbursement is staying the same, operational costs, rent increases, inflation, taxes, interest rates have increased. That puts a lot of, you know, that puts a change on the available working lines of capital and credit and so much other things that can affect your business. Interest rates can affect a whole lot of things. They can even affect insurance companies. So the ones that are paying and reimbursing for a lot of your services, if not all. So by not choosing to grow, if you're looking to just kind of continue as it is, I don't want to say you're playing it safe because you've done amazing. You, you've took a lot of risk. You stuck your neck out there. You've been an entrepreneur. You've been a business owner. And if the wind is coming out of your sale, if the wind's out of your sale because of COVID or overwhelm or frustration or admin, paperwork, insurance, reimbursement, hiring, uh, whatever, DPT is asking for too much money, wh whatever it is. I think respectfully that if you're not picking one of these levers, if you're not going for growth and you're not looking to buy local practices nearby or partner with them or merge with them, and you're not looking to exit or sell, then that fourth component would be status quo, I believe, respectfully. Let me know what you think. That's it for now. But this is, in a way, answering some recent audience questions. If you have questions, send me questions. Email me. Find me on LinkedIn. My email is at the end of the episode here. Subscribe to The Dave Kittle Show on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. Send me some questions because sometimes these questions are relevant. I will leave your name out of it, no problem. But oftentimes, these types of questions will help spur my thought process and make an episode for you. And by you, then it helps other practice owners, not just you. So. Take that for what it is. Subscribe to the Dave Kittle Show on those platforms. We'll catch you next time here on the show. And that's it for now. Thank you. Hey, it's Dave Kittle. Are you a healthcare business owner or physical therapy practice owner who is looking to figure out your succession plan or exit strategy? We might be able to help. And in fact, we may be interested in acquiring your practice. If you're interested, you can reach out to me. Shoot me an email at dave at concierge pain relief. Dot com. That's D-A-V-E at C-O-N 
C-I-E-R-G-E, painrelief.com, or you can call me at any time, 646-781-8884.